Finland. Uh, okay. And um, the, uh, the purpose at the beginning was a bit more on, on tax uh, hints for foreigners in Finland. But now for the last one and a half years, I've been foc focusing on helping foreigners to buy a home. And that is also the topic today. So I guess I'll just share my screen then. Just a second. You can all hear me, hopefully. Yes, I can hear you. I hope others can hear you. you get yeah, I guess so then, yeah. Just a second, I'll show the screen. So you should see the screen. So do you see this presentation? Yes, we can. Okay. So yes. <clears throat> so welcome uh, to everybody who, who came despite this fantastic weather outside. So thank you for, for joining. Um, if you're thinking about buying a home, but, but you're uncertain on what you need to do, uh, then this webinar is exactly for you. Um, a few announcements before we start. So uh, you can write questions into the chat if you have questions during the, the presentations, during the presentation, and I will then answer them at the end in the Q&A uh, section. Uh, and then I think, uh, wasn't it so, Yvonne, this is go going to be recorded so uh, people can look, that, can look at this again later on, um, which, is, which is a good thing because we have, have a lot of stuff coming up. So that is also then a possibility for everybody. And yeah, that we have looked into. There you can see the, the Instagram accounts and uh, internet pages again. And then before we start, yeah, I have to say this also, this disclaimer. So I'm not sharing any um, investment advice, just my own experience, just my own observations. And uh, in this webinar, I cannot take into account your objectives, your financial situation, or, oh, James, yeah. or, your, or your personal needs. So this is a disclaimer okay. on this. So here's what we are going to go through today. As I said, it's a lot. Uh, I hope this will not be boring for you, and I hope this is useful to the maximum of you out there. So please take notes if possible, ask questions, I will ask them, I will answer them um, at the end in the Q&A section. So five points. Uh, the first one is a reality check. Uh, it, this is about you first and, and what you can afford, what the market is that you are in, and then other realities that a home buyer must face today. Then in the second part, we'll look into the bank loan. This is relevant because most likely most of you will need one to buy a home. Um, so we'll look into the steps to get that going. Then in the third point, um, we start, we look into what you need to do in order to find the right place, just the search of, of, of a home on what to check and what is important there. And then in the fourth part, uh, we assume you have found a place that you want to offer, make an offer for. So we, then we look at what is the procedure to, to make a purchase offer for a home that you want to buy. And then in the fifth and last point, we look at then the sales transaction. So when, when your offer gets accepted, uh, you make a sales agreement, a sales deed with the seller together. So we look at, into that briefly as well. So let's start with the first section, the reality check. So what, ho what home can you afford? This is what we'll look into. What is your situation? What is the market like? The interest situation? And then also very important, what advantages do you have as a first home buyer in Finland? So what home, what home can you afford? Um, this question is important because it's no fun 
to buy a home that is too expensive for your means. Um, I got a message even today, this morning from, from a follower who asked me how can I manage with uh, to, to high loan payments and, and so forth, whether I had some any ideas. So yeah, there was not much I could could tell. The problem was just that this that this couple just had taken a too high, too high uh, loan and, and now noticed that that it was a yeah that they haven't take, looked into the risks uh enough so this is something that should of course not happen this is a very bad situation and uh, yeah in worst case you have to sell your home for cheaper uh and then still pay off that and and of course we want to avoid that um so when we think about what home you can afford um this depends on two things in my opinion uh First thing is, how much money do you already have right now? How much money can you put into buying a home? And then the second, how much loan can you handle with your income? So some people have quite a lot of money already, but then maybe the income is not so high or others have almost nothing in the, to start with, but then the income is relatively strong or high. So different combinations are are possible and ideally you have of course enough to already and and your income is optimal ideal but of course the reality is always somewhere there in between so so you need to have a clear picture of your financial financial situation um and the bank will also ask you these these questions so the bank will also uh wants also wants this clear picture of your financial situations so the questions that I've listed here, uh, you need to be able to answer uh, first to yourself and then also towards towards the bank. And when it comes to the to the third question here, how much can you uh, pay for for housing? Um, that for that, it's good to keep in mind that that housing costs as a as a rule of thumb um, should not be more than 30, 40, sorry, forty percent of your net income. So uh, paying off the loan, paying for interest, pay, paying for housing charges, water fee and all that. So that should really not be more than 40% of the net income. And if you are live, live there as a family, then of course it's of 40% of the net income of, of the couple or of the family. Then the market that we are all in at the moment, what is the housing market like? So in Finland, uh, prices, home prices have been increasing hmm. for a long time, for more than 15 years until 2020. Oh, yeah. For sure, for real. Until, uh, yeah, please mute everybody, uh, your microphones. Uh, so prices have been increasing for um, more than 15 years and uh, they, they have seen a peak peak in prices in uh, early 2022. And, and this increase in prices was uh, fueled mainly by, by very low interest rates. So it was very cheap to get money, to, to get loan. And uh, so people could afford homes more than, than earlier and that put uh, prices up. Uh, but but then in early 2022, uh, after Putin attacked um, Ukraine, um, inflation went up, uh, and and then accordingly also interest went up. So all this um, changed the situation, and then prices have come down a little bit, or not not a little bit actually, uh, quite considerably. So we have a. Um, in, in the past 12 months, prices have come down uh, 10% uh, countrywide. If we look into Helsinki, the decrease has been more than that. In Tampere, for example, it was a bit less than that. If we think about micro locations, then um, like city centers, and then especially small flats uh, have decreased more than this 10% in the last uh, 12 months. So a studio in, in downtown or central Helsinki has suffered much more than that. But then again, um, bigger flats and then a bit more outside of the city center, like family homes, um, 
somewhere somewhere outside they have not been been uh, decreasing that much in in prices but everything has come down and why have prices come down well the, the rising inflation that i mentioned rising interest and then also another factor uh which is that there has been a massive construction activity uh before uh prices came down so um uh, construction companies have uh, started to to construct a lot of uh, sites and and this is always a long process and they were all started before the war broke out and before uh, inflation went up so all this has been initiated earlier but it's getting ready now and this brings a lot of new supply to the market so if you live in Helsinki and you take the train um, for example, if before just before coming to Basila, on the right side you can see a lot of co construction buildings and and which get ready now. But uh, it's already clear that it will be very difficult to sell them because there's so much supply in the market at the moment. So there's a lot of more, lot more supply than than demand in the market, and um, we have the same situation also in the rental market. So there's more um, homes ready for for tenants looking for tenants than actually tenants need homes. So that is the the market situation. So we have a buyer's market. That means that it's easy for buyers to buy or relatively easy for buyers to buy because there's much supply and there's more sellers. And in the rental market, we have a tenant's market, so to say. Then a brief look at the interest rates. Uh, as already mentioned in the previous slide, uh, interest have climbed up fast after a very, very low level, even a negative interest level um, to, to 4.2 more than 4% in, in, in October 2023. That was a short surprise for, for everybody that it went so fast and uh, also created uh, pressure to, to sell homes to, to certain people who had taken too many risks. But interest rates have come down from the peaks um, more than more than one percent point uh, since, since the peak in October. So now today we are at 3.1%. Uh, so, which is already clear, clear below that, and uh, it's also, uh, also the market expects that interest rates will go further down in the next uh, time. So, it it's expected that we will see that we will go below below three percent uh, before the end of the year. So, um, the outlook for interest rates is quite positive, also for for home buyers. One can say because um, you can get. Um, quite decent fixed interest rates for um, for a longer period as well. So if you want to hedge or protect your interest rate uh, over 20 years, for example, if you want to be sure that interest rates don't pop up too much, then you can get, for example, uh, I would say like around 3.5% for 20 years. So that is that is really not 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 bad. So, and then interesting overview about first home buyer benefits. Um, because you as a first home buyer have certain benefits in Finland. Uh, the first one concerns the down payment. Uh, that is the money that you put in. Uh, we'll talk about that later a bit more. Uh, that's the money that you already have. So as a first home buyer, it can be as low as only 5% of the whole purchase price. Uh, I mean, legally, it's 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 allowed. For others, uh, there's a legal minimum. It's fifteen percent. So, for for example, if I would like to buy a new home for myself, I would have to put fifteen percent own money down and take a loan for eighty five percent. But you, if you are a first home buyer, uh, you can you can pay it down, put down or uh, make a down payment of only five percent, in theory. Uh, of course. It will then um, also mean that the bank will uh, demand that you have pretty good income because you will have to pay back accordingly a, a lot more. But in theory, it's possible. It's a benefit that only uh, first home buyer, buyers have. Then the second benefit uh, is uh, the ASP scheme. I'm sure um, 
most of you or some of you have heard about that already. Um, I don't want to go too deep into it, but it's 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 a savings uh, pro plan. Uh, so you save into this ASB account during two years. So if you start today, it means you can buy and profit from a uh, buy a home and profit from this scheme only in two years time. Um, so you save for two years, and then at the end of the two years, uh, you get you get a government subsidized loan uh, with a also with a lower down payment possible. You get some subsidies on interest, um, and then also for collateral and and so forth. So that's also a good thing to to um, to know. But as I said, that's if you start today, you will have to save for two years if and then you can buy only. And then the third one here uh, is probably a bit underestimated, I would say. Uh, at least there's not much talk about that. But I, from I can say from experience that this is really a first time, a uh, first home buyer benefit in practice because um, you don't need to sell your current home first. Uh, that is a problem that other home buyers have. They first have to sell their own home and then can buy an, the new one. But uh, for you, it's very easy. You just cancel your rental agreement and you don't need to. You're, you're very flexible and um, you can the offers that you can make in the market. Uh, yeah, become quite strong because because you have no um, yeah pressure to sell your home first. We'll talk about that later as well. Um, this was the reality check. Uh, let's look into what you will then need to start with or after you have the uh, knowledge about your financial situation, a bank loan. So we'll go through quickly what you need to know about bank loans and how to get one. Um, First, talk about down payment and collateral on how to apply. Then we look at the answer from a bank. If you get a loan offer, what, what are elements of such a loan offer? Um, then I'll say a couple of words about loan promise and then um, what to do if the bank says no, because also that happens. So, yeah, and when it comes to, to bank loans, one important thing to understand um, is the relation between the down payment on the one side and then the so-called collateral. Um, let's think back, uh, what is the down payment? So as I said earlier, the down payment is the money that you already have to, to buy and, and that you use. Uh, to buy to buy a home. So for there's this example here. Uh, let's say a home costs two hundred thousand euros, two hundred k. Let's say you have seventy thousand uh, euros uh, yourself, and you decide that you want to put down sixty thousand into that home. So you keep ten ten thousand on the side and put down sixty sixty thousand for that home. If you do so, that means that you will need a loan for 140,000 euros. And your bank then wants a loan security, a collateral for this loan. Um, and the home that you will buy will serve as a, as a collateral for, for the loan, but only for 70% of its value. So if you buy a home that is worth 200,000, then the bank will accept this home as a collateral for only for the value of 70%. So you can get only a loan of 144 uh, with this collateral. Um, but if your down payment would be less than in this example here, let's say 5%, so 10,000 euros, then you would need 190,000 euros as a loan in this example, a lot more. Uh, and that would mean that you would also need then extra collateral, extra loan security, because your home can, can only serve as a collateral for 140,000 euros. You would need an extra collateral for 50,000 euros. And this extra collateral, this extra security can be another home that has no loan on it. It can be a mucky, it can be shares. 
It can be someone's guarantee. It can be a person, personal guarantee by someone. Um, and what what it is in the most case, it is an extra uh, fee that you pay. It's an extra insurance that you take um, in order to cover the missing collateral. For example, Garantia is a service in Finland that that provides these uh, extra collateral insurances, and then you pay your one time. Uh, one-time fee and uh, it's not as expensive as as one might might think so it's possible to get uh, but just for you to know that that for the bank it's always relevant that that there is also enough loan security enough collateral and the less you pay down the more you need collateral so then the loan application um yeah, ideally uh, you have a loan offer or a loan promise ready when, when you look for a home. Um, that's why uh, you should make your loan application really at the very beginning now. Um, such a loan application doesn't bind you to take a loan. It's, it's no, there's no risk uh, related to that. You just ask the bank, hey, here I am. Here's my salary. Here's what I have. I would like to buy that. And a home worth X, um, yes or no. So it's it's just at this stage, it's just to see uh, how much the banks um, or your bank is ready to give you in in terms of loan. When you know that um, you get two hundred thousand, or is it two hundred fifty or one hundred fifty? Um, it's it's easier for you to act on the market because then you know your budget, you know what you can. You know much better what you can actually really pay for, and 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 uh, also offer then later later on. So make your applications online. Um, it's very easy. Um, Nordia OP and Danske have um, these pages for loan applications in English. And to my knowledge, at least, uh, you also get the like the the um, re replies. And, and then also the communication with, with the bank, uh, with these at least, works in English. So, so it's really not difficult and you can do all that through internet. And uh, yeah, usually you, you get a reply. Okay, they are maybe not so fast. Don't expect an answer the next day. But within a couple of weeks, um, you should get an answer and then also be able to discuss okay. the bank's decision uh, in an online meeting then. And... Uh, and uh, yeah, at this stage, there's no need to to negotiate uh, yet with the bank, I would say. It's more about to see uh, how much you can get. If you ask two or three banks, you, one might give you 180, one might give you 170, and another one might say nothing, you get nothing. So it's just about that. And then you know what is your, your budget frame. So yeah, after you made the application, uh, of course you hope for an answer and uh, a positive answer and hopefully uh, it's, it's a loan offer. Uh, and let's look into what such a loan offer typically includes for those people who haven't uh, yet applied for a loan. So the first thing is of course, uh, you have their loan amount. So that's the amount that the, the bank is ready to, to really give you as a loan. It can be that you apply for 150,000, but the bank says, hey, we can only give you 135. That's also possible. But yeah, when you get the answer, you, you check what you, what you can get. Um, then also important, or what is listed in, in, in the loan offer is the margin interest rate and then the reference rate. For example, margin 0.5% plus Euribor 12. That means that the margin that is uh, your personal, um, that is based on your personal risk level, that is a number between 0.35% and 0. Point maybe 6% for, for first home buyers. Uh, that, that shows how risky you are for the bank. So if you have a really high income um, and, and so forth, then it will be closer to 0. 0.35, if not, then you will be closer to 0 0.60. I myself have 0 0.70, so that's quite high, even higher. 
uh, because uh, I have already quite some loans and, and in the bank's eyes, I am a risky, more risky person. That is why my margin is is higher than than the ones of uh, first first home buyers. You're not letting me have it. All right. And then on top of the margin rate comes a, a reference rate, an interest reference rate, which then changes over the loan period. That reference rate is typically the Euribor 12 months. That's the most common, commonly used in the Eurozone, also in Finland. And um, this uh, then changes every 12 months, if you take the Euribor 12 months. So both together are then your, your interest rate, your, the margin and then the the reference rate on top. Uh, then you have this, uh, yeah, you have a one-time bank fee to, to get the loan. That's usually a couple of hundreds, can be 500, can be 900 euro or 700, depending on the amount that you want, no one-time fee. And then you have some kind of monthly service, service fee, typically two euros per month or so. Uh, that's also listed in the, in the, in the offer. And all these costs together are then combined in the so-called um, APRC. That's like uh, the effective annual interest rate. I think the abbreviation means uh, annualized. I don't remember, but it's 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 all the costs together. So it's the margin, the euro board, the one-time fee, and the monthly fees. It's all like um, to to put it into one number though that it's easier for consumers to to compare different loan loan amounts uh, then you have also the loan period in the loan offer it it's possible that you apply for a loan uh, with an amount X and then you ask hey I would like to have a loan period of 30 years or 35 years some ba banks uh, offer that and maybe the bank says we can give you that amount but but for a shorter period, we, we insist on 20 years or something like that. So that is also an aspect to, to look into the offer then. And with every loan offer, the banks also then make suggestions for the extra products. So of course they try to upsell. Um, they want you to buy some extra, uh, maybe interest rate protection or hedging um, insurances, um, saving and so forth. So there's no need to, to, to take these um, it's just, yeah, to, to make you buy more. Um, I, I'm not saying they make no sense, but, but you should know what, what they really are and whether you really need them before, before taking these. But I would say at, at this stage, the most important thing is what loan amount. And, um, that's basically the, the main thing at this stage, at the beginning. Yeah, and this is very important. Uh, I want to stress that a loan offer that you get from a bank is not a loan promise. So the bank, uh, it, it the bank will write in the offer that that the offer is subject to the bank checking what you are buying with the loan. Uh, the the bank wants to see the collateral, the security. Uh, of of uh, of the loan first before it grants the loan. So, um, do not think that that you automatically get a loan if you get a loan offer. It's not yet a hundred percent sure that you get a, a a loan promise, or that you get a loan. Uh, if you want to get a loan promise, if you have a loan offer and you want to be absolutely sure that you get a loan, for example, before making an offer, a purchase offer for a home. Then you can send um, the, uh, the, it's called property manager certificate, is an Todistus in Finnish, uh, of the flat that you want to buy to the bank and say, I want to buy this one. Can you give me a binding promise that you finance that if I pay maximum X for this flat? And then the bank usually will answer with this flat, until that amount, within a month, we will finance it 100%. You can be sure. Then you then you have a loan promise. But but you have to check from the from the bank. So the bank wants to see what you buy. And if you have no loan promise, 
um, and you want to make a purchase offer for a home, then you should always make a conditional offer. That means that's an offer where you say, I will buy this for that price um, if I get a loan. Because then if you don't get a loan, then you have the right to step back from, from buying that, that home without paying a penalty. So very important, a loan offer is not a loan promise, but you can make it a loan promise, but it requires some extra steps. And then, yeah, the bank says no. That's, of course, what nobody wants, but that also happens, of course. And um, what does it mean when the bank says no? It's, it's basically a message from the bank uh, saying or indicating that, that the bank sees too much risk in financing you at this stage. Um, and this can have different reasons. Uh, and this is not necessarily only about you. Uh, this can, the uh, reason can be also that, that this particular bank um, has, for example, given out too many uh, loans at the at the moment, uh, and they don't have much money to lend out. So they can be very critical to whom they give the the few money that they that they have, or it can be it can be anything anything else. Um, the bank, the same bank's decision with the same application from your side can be another one in six months' time. And so forth. So it's it depends on many things. It's not only your numbers, you. Um, but if you want to find out more, um, the you you can ask the bank what what was problematic for the bank to finance uh, your case. Uh, you can ask: Is the problem like the the income? Is it too low, or is um. Uh, or was the or you can ask what kind what loan amount could work. Uh, with your current income, would be ten thousand less or twenty thousand loan uh, be possible, or or is the problem the collateral? Uh, would you need a little bit more down payment? So that's that's something you can you can always uh, try to find out from the bank, and of course, try out different banks. It's of course it doesn't make sense to to try only only one bank. So. Yeah, hopefully um, you all nevertheless have a loan offer after you applied for a loan. So I hope, I hope everybody of you will then apply for a loan just to get started so that you have that ready and can take the next steps then. And the next steps being, um, yeah, now that you know what you can afford and, and you have a loan offer um, in your pocket, um, now you can get serious with, with searching for a home. Now you can look into homes. You can look what is on the market. Um, and and, and uh, yeah, that's the funny part then. So you have made your homework and now you can search and hopefully find something that is um, your dream home. So let's go through the things you need to know to find the right home. So the criteria, um, yeah, I don't want to spend too much time on that. Everyone should know what, what is important for, for himself, herself. Um, it can make sense to, to if you're a couple or so, to, to uh, make use this, this kind of list and then choose together which things are must-haves for you and then what is nice to have. Um, and and so forth, just to 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 find a common um, set of criteria of what you're what you're looking for. Then, uh, where to search? Uh, online portals uh, are the big ones are uh, etuavi.com and oikotie.fi. Um, they have, yeah, they are almost same size, I would say. I think Oikotie has a bit more uh, market share in, in the capital region. Etuovi is stronger, I think, in Tampere. But they are, I would say, they have almost the same. Uh, like everything should, should be in both, basically. Um, and 
Uh, the good thing about them also is that you can use watchdogs. So if you have a search, uh, if you have put a search with certain criteria that that interests you, you can save that search and then you get a notification if if a home with with the same um, criteria pops up. So that is something I would recommend once you know your criteria more more clearly. Um, Dori Pistifi here also mentioned under Oiko Etie, uh, they use Oikotie inventory, to my knowledge. So it's basically the same as Oikotie. And then there's a couple of um, like private ads, um, but very, very limited amount of these. So I think, I'm not sure if it makes sense to search only in Tori. I would search then rather in Oikotie or Oikotie because there you have like everything basically. And then this other one, hutokaupat.com, uh, this is uh, an auction portal. Uh, I would be very careful with that for beginners because auctions are, are a bit tricky. Uh, you can make also big mistakes mis mistakes there. So I would stick to the to the big ones. Etuovi and oikutie. All right. And then let's say you put a search there. I'm looking for three bedroom in this area and this size and so forth. And and, and then um, your portal so, uh, shows you the, the results of your search and you get all these different home ads like here uh, in this computer. And uh, yeah, what should you check then? What should you do? Well, the following are, are important or the following are things that I check when when I look at homes. Um, of course, the location is always uh, important, but then uh, the construction year is usually the, the first thing that I look after location uh, because that is important um, for the renovation implications of the building. If you see the home is from the 2010s, it was constructed in 2010 or later, um, then it means it will not need renovations in, in, in a longer time. No worries. If the home is from the 1990s, then you know that, okay, there's first smaller things are coming up, maybe the windows and, and something like that. Nothing big, but like the first things are coming. Uh, and if a home is from the 70s, uh, then, then it's possible that you have like everything just around the corner. And that is also why the, the, the homes from the 70s um, are usually the cheapest on the market today because there is a pipe renovation coming in two years and a facade renovation in five years and a new roof in, yeah. So, so you have all this coming up and of course this will cost and that is why the price is relatively low uh, now. But of course, you will have to pay for the other things for the renovations later. So, but yeah, in that sense, the construction year is, it helps a lot. Uh, you, so you have to see the price always in relation to the construction year. The floor plan is uh, is important, of course, because you are going to live in this place and you want this, of course, to, to, to work for you. Um, the form of heating, uh, that's also important. It's something that um, affects the charge level the monthly maintenance charges that you will pay to the cooperative. Uh, if you have uh, geothermal heating, um, that's the best. That is, uh, then heating is almost for free, one can say. Um, if you have a, a home with, with oil heating or electricity heating, it's very rare. Um, but if you have one of these, um, it's a no-go because that's really expensive and, um, yeah, so if you see a, a cheap home uh, and then the heating is oil or electricity, then you know why it's cheap because you will pay a lot on, on heating expenses or on maintenance charges to finance the, the heating change, the heating costs. Then the own plot or rented plot, uh, also that is, is, is a thing that affects the charge level. As you most likely know, a, a building can be on a, on a plot that is owned by the cooperative, but it can also be on a plot that is rented, for example, from the municipality. 
uh, and then the the cooperative has to pay a rent to the to the um, landlord of the of the plots. So a uh, own plot is always better than a rented plot because then you have lower costs in the long run. The vacation of the home is also an important thing because um, you have your schedule. You might want to move until within a special time frame or so. So sometimes homes are already empty. You can move in basically right away once you buy it, or then you have to negotiate with the seller on on a on a time frame when when it vacates. But it's already written in the in the ad usually what is when it will free up. And then the maintenance charge. Also, this is uh, quite important for me. So that it's uh, that's a thing that I calculate myself. It's not written in the in the in the in the ad, but I just take um, the maintenance charge that you pay per month. It's written in the ad, and then I divide it by the the surface in square meters, and then this number tells me whether the maintenance charge is high or low. So uh, in the capital region. Uh, the average is five euro twenty, and and then countrywide, the whole country in average is four euro sixty per square meter. So um, I have homes in in my investment portfolio where the maintenance charge is below four euros. That is good, uh, but then if you see homes that have a maintenance charge level six euro, seven euro, sometimes you see even eight, nine. It can happen. Um, then it's of course then you will have a very high monthly maintenance charge so that's always worth to calculate how high the maintenance charge is and then as the last one here i want to mention the buying option option uh whether there is a buying option uh in this co cooperative so it can be that if you buy a, a flat out of a building um, that the other shareholders in the building then have an option to buy the flat actually before you, so they can take it away from you. This is this only happens in 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 very old buildings usually in in city center. Uh, so there there might be this this buying option. Lunastus lauseke in Finnish, but uh, yeah, it's it's maybe in one percent of the cooperatives only. Yeah, so these are things to check in the online ad. And um, yeah, housing cooperatives, uh, that is also a, a very Finnish concept. Uh, important to understand how that works. So in Finland, you just you, you don't just buy a flat, um, but instead you always buy shares of a whole housing cooperative, Talo Yhtiö. In Finnish. So you always pay uh, buy a part of a, of a bigger unit. And that is why you must always be interested in the housing cooperative as a whole. So you do not only look at the flat, how is the what what floor and, and, and so forth, what, what materials are used, but you also have to be very interested in the cooperative, in the building, in the whole building itself. Um, that means in, in, in practice that that you can paint your flats walls as you like in the color you want to and you can change the floor um, but you cannot for example change the front door or the windows uh, and so forth so the shell of the building that means the facade windows balcony roof the foundation and then all the wet facilities and and all the lines that means heating system um, the pipes, electricity system, ventilation, and, and all that. All this is on the cooperative's liability. And if these need a renovation, and they will need a renovation at some point, then the cooperative has to take care of them. And then it's financed by all shareholders. So it will mean that you will also participate in financing the new roof, the new windows, the new balcony, and the new pipes. Very important to understand. So you will have to co contribute to that as well. So the charges that is related to, to living in a cooperative. So you also uh, pay common charges. Um, so the maintenance charge, I have already mentioned that earlier. So that's the one that I always calculate how high it is in, in a flat. Uh, 
that covers the running costs of of, of living in in the flat. So it's it means heating, um, the service company or con concierge service, garbage handling, um, cleaning, the property manager. If the plot is a rented plot, then um, it could be that that the maintenance charge also covers the rent for the flat, but it can also be um, sorry the rent for the plot, but it can also be that that you pay separately for for the the plot rent that can be a separate fee then in the charges. Um, you pay water fee. That is something that you probably know already from renting. So that's a fee per person often or per consumption. Um, it can be that there you pay no water fee and it's included in the maintenance charge instead. That is also possible. You can see that when, when you look through the documentation, how everything is, is set up. Sometimes you have to pay a little internet fee and uh, yeah, depending on, on the cooperative. So I would say the main thing here is to understand um, how much you will have to pay per month to the cooperative. Because you, if you buy a home, you will have to pay the loan. You will have pay the You will have to pay the interest, and you will have to pay a maintenance charge to the cooperative. And maybe even a little bit more. But don't get afraid. This is very logic, and you will understand. So um, there is also another charge called financing charge, rahoituswastike or pääomavastike, in Finnish. Um, that's a charge that is collected only if the housing cooperative has either recently been constructed, so it's a very new building, or it has had major renovations lately, pipe renovation, roof renovation, new windows, new balconies, something like that. So um, in order to pay back, uh, so, so in order to make these renovations, these big renovations, the, the cooperative has taken a loan from a bank in its own name and you or the shareholders have to pay back the loan to the cooperative uh, later on. So, so in order to, for the cooperative to pay back the loan to the bank, it has uh, to, to collect this financing charge from, from the shareholders uh, so that it can pay it back. And uh, so... Only if a flat carries a part of this cooperative loan, then it has to pay um, this uh, financing charge. If you uh, pay off the, the, the cooperative loan, then you do not need to pay this financing charge. All right. Then... Um, about sales price and debt free price. So if the cooperative has a loan, then there's two prices in the home at the Muntihinda sales price. That is the money that you need to buy the home. So for example, if the home, uh, the sales price is 160,000 uh, and, and the co there's a cooperative loan tied to that home worth 40,000, then the total debt free price would be 200,000 euros. Uh, that means you pay 160,000 to the seller right away in, in the sales transaction. And then the 40,000 you would pay through the financing charge to the cooperative over the next years. You don't need to pay that right away. You can if you want. And if you do so, you do not need to pay this monthly financing charge. But um, you can also insist on paying the financing charge. And then you only need 160,000 euros to buy this home, uh, which has a debt-free price of 200,000 euros. This is a bit tricky, but but yeah, it's the important thing here is that, that you should always consider the debt-free price, the total price. And, and when you make an offer, also the debt-free price is the, is the total uh, price that you will pay in the end. Very important. Um, the online ad that you that we looked at that gives you a, a good overview, um, and and based on that you can go and visit the place. That's fine, but uh, if, when it comes to making an offer, you should always dig deeper. You should always check the documentation. Uh, it's in Finnish, 
uh, language and it has its own terminology, but it's it's uh, you have to do that. I never I would never make an offer without really reading that. And this is also one of the services that I provide for foreigners in Finland. So before making an offer, you should have done the following. So you check the documentation, you understood the financials, you have a clear view on the renovation needs. If you don't know what renovations are coming up and what they will cost, then don't make a purchase offer uh, yet. Get the information somehow. And then the last point considers concerns only newly constructed homes because there are sometimes the financing charge might look a bit low, uh, but it's only because you do not yet amortize the loan. Let's move forward. Time is running. So yeah, let's say you have seen, you have found the, the home that you want to make an offer for. So, um, and uh, yeah, what, what do you have to know about the offer? Uh, let's look through that. So um, these are the terms that you need to define in your purchase offer. Uh, it's not only the price in euros, it's also, um, yeah, the key handover date. So when you get the keys, when the buyer starts to pay charges and uh, when you want to sign the sales deed and so forth. Uh, these are also things that you need to think about. No big, big issues, but, but they are part of your offer. And uh, yeah, the, the agent will ask you that if you don't have them ready. And we'll look at the penalty and the offer validity on the next slides. So the offer validity uh, is important because your offer should always have a certain validity. So um, you have to say un for how long your offer is valid. And I recommend to make it only 24 hours or what I always do um, next day at 6 p.m. Uh, don't make it two days, sometimes agents suggest you, you make it for two days, but that is, it, it will work against you because if you make an offer and give give it a long validity, um, it gives time to the other people to, to make things that, that are not in your interest. So keep it, keep it short, make it 24 hours. The penalty, um, that is, uh, if your F offer gets accepted, but then um, the buyer doesn't show up to, to sign the sales contract, then uh, the buyer would have to pay a penalty uh, if you have put that clause in, in the offer. So that's always worth to mention also in the offer. The, the penalty can only be a maximum. Uh, the maximum penalty is 4% of the sales price. And you can define that also in your offer. So I recommend to do that. Of course, that applies to both sides. And then uh, the conditional offer um this is what i mentioned earlier a uh, very important thing um you can make offers under a certain condition and if that condition um uh becomes true then uh you you can buy the home otherwise you don't need to buy the home and you can avoid then the penalty so for example a conditional offer could be I buy your home for 150,000 euros. I want the keys by then, and we sign the contract by then, and and so forth. If I get a loan from Ope by next week, Friday, or if I get my home sold within three months. So these are conditional offers. Um, of course, an offer without a condition is the most attractive for the seller. So if you uh, don't need to put, especially the second offer, uh, the second condition here in your offer, then you have good, good cards already because many others who might think about making an offer can only make an, a conditional offer saying that I have to get my home sold within X months. Uh, this is a question I'm always at, or often asked uh, by by foreigners. Um, how much below the asking price can I offer? How much is allowed? Uh, what is, yeah? Um, there's no golden rule. Um, in average, 
like statistically, I think it's 5% below, uh, the, like the sales price is 5% below the asking price. But it, from own experience, it depends a lot on the, on the situation, on the seller's situation, whether there is competition or not. It also depends on the buyer's situation. So um, sometimes you have to offer more than the asking price in order to get it. And sometimes you get a really high discount. My own personal record was 17% for discount from the asking price. Um, yeah, what happens once you have sent the offer with the validity and everything and the terms? Um, let's hope, yeah, that's it either gets accepted, of course, or then it gets um, rejected. Um, if the other party doesn't react at all to your offer, that then means that it's rejected. So that's the same. Or then the other party makes a so-called counter offer. So if you say, I buy a home for 150,000, buy then and we pay then and we sign then, uh, then the other party might say, the price is fine, but the schedule, uh, I would like to have the schedule so that we can live in this place still one month longer. So then technically he, this other party will reject your offer. You will not be binded by it anymore. And there's a new offer from the seller to you. It will have its own validity. And for the period of that validity, the seller can then not accept other offers because it, the seller is offering it then to you exclusively. And sometimes you get this kind of ping pong then between counter offers and then at some stage um, there's an agreement. So let's hope um, that that you can uh, get your offer accepted or you can agree on the terms otherwise. Uh, this is also something I help my customers with uh, the offer and negotiation process. And now we're all, almost through um, the buying. So if your offer gets accepted, uh, let's go through the buying. What happens there? So um, immediately after your offer was accepted, uh, you should inform your bank or your banks. Uh, let them know, hey, my offer got accepted because then the bank knows, hey, this guy is not only you know, asking around what's, what loan he, he or she could get. Now he, they, they need a loan. It's, it's getting real and soon. So uh, then you should agree on the final specs of, of your loan with the bank. And now it makes sense to negotiate. So if you have two banks uh, competing with each other, then you can say, hey, I got this from the other bank. Can you match it or not? And so forth. So then you can negotiate. But keep in mind that, that you have, as a part in your offer, you have said that you want to sign the, the, the contract, the sales deed, by a certain date. Uh, so don't negotiate too long or don't, don't make the mistake to discuss too long with the bank then uh, because you have to get the, the whole sales deed signed by the date that you had as a term in your offer. So make sure to finalize the loan before the last signature date you gave in your offer. And then the sales deed, um, yeah, that's the contract, the sales contract. You get it before signing it. You get it by email. Um, then the important thing is to, to check that it's really the terms that you have defined in the, in the offer. Sometimes agents make mistakes. Then you just say, hey, we had agreed on this. Please correct. And then they correct it. Otherwise, you sign, sign a sales contract that is not the one that you intended to. And uh, these can nowadays be... Um, dealt with also electronically. Not much more to say about this. Transfer tax, I just wanted to mention that. So um, you pay 1.5% for shares in a housing company as transfer tax. So if you buy a house or a home for 200,000, you have to pay 3,000 uh, euros in transfer tax, Vara in Sierra in Finnish. And if you buy a detached house, then you pay 3% of the purchase price. So this was a lot of stuff. Let me drink. <laughs> and then briefly, um, how I can help you, and then we can go to the Q&A. So um, the first thing 
I would say, uh, is for those who who don't have it yet. So I, there's a free guide on how to buy a home in Finland on my website. You will find it there. It's good to get started. It covers uh, most of the things we discussed today, but it's in written form. Um, but then uh, on top of that, or if you have that already, then then I also offer personal consultation. I've been doing that for one and a half years, and I enjoy that um, a lot. Uh, the last customer uh, that succeeded in buying a home with me was yesterday. A guy from from Oulu bought, bought his uh, first home with with my help uh, yesterday. Um, I think this is the highest value to home buyers, and and we have a very close um, business relationship in that. But uh, for for that, ideally, you should have a clear picture of your financial situation and already have a loan. Uh, offer ready so that we can start with that. So we, we should not start from zero. You should have um, the loan offer ready and so forth. Then then it's worth to to think about that. So if you're interested, just contact me and then let's see what we can do. Yes. So I would say we can go to the Q and A. Uh, Michael, can I say a few a few things before we go to the Q and A? Yeah. Uh, uh, guys, I'm going to share a link for the feedback. Uh, for the feedback, and can you please fill it in and um send it through? And now we can go into the Q and A. Thanks, guys. Thank you. So, yeah. So where would I then find the, yeah, I go to the chat, sorry. Yeah. The questions are in the chat. Yeah, okay. So I start here. Uh, da, 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 da. What about the prices in Espo? Um, very general question. Espo is part of the capital region and uh, prices have come down in the whole of the capital region by 10% in the last uh, year. Um, so it's it's the same uh, thing for 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 uh, homes there as, as in other places in capital region. Um, it's very general, a very general question. So I, I would say as long as you have, um, uh, if you think about appreciation, so to keep the value of, of the home or to increase the value. So make sure to buy uh, in locations that are close to, to good infrastructure, ideally to infrastructure that is uh, developing. So where the city and the, the, the um, uh, is, is investing. So new schools, new um, uh, public transport infrastructure, these kind of things. So and that you can find in Espo, but of course in Espo there's also different different areas. I cannot cover everything, but um, yeah, I think that was behind the the question. Um, um, there's yes. there's one who has someone who has raised their raised up their hand. Um, come on, okay. please please go through. I'll mute yourself and ask your question. Yes. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for your uh, clear presentation. Uh, I just have some questions I wanted to ask. First, the maintenance charge that you mentioned that you um, divided uh, like, like per meter square. square. Yes. Yeah. So I wanted to ask, did you say like five euro per meter square in Helsinki area and then 4.60 was uh, outside Helsinki? Yeah, it was uh, 4 euro 60 was countrywide. So it's okay, including countrywide. the capital region. So it's like the whole country is 460 and then capital region is 520. Okay, so now, five, five is the maximum that you can pay per... Five is, let's say five is normal in Helsinki. Let's put it that way. And and, and Helsinki, five, you mean like Vanta area as well? Yeah, yeah. It's, okay. it, it's not much. Okay. But if it's seven... Then it's a lot. It's, it's a lot. Okay. Yeah. And does it does it um affect like how old the house is? Like if it's like less than let's say um fifteen years old. Uh, in a new house, in a new building, the maintenance charge is typically lower because there's not much to do. It's usually um energy efficient, so it has less heating costs. Um, there's not much to fix. You know, there's 
Um, so yeah, the age plays a role. So a, a young building, newly constructed home has pretty low maintenance charge. But then it's also other factors, what kind of heating, what kind of, yeah, is the plot rented or not? Um, all kinds mm -hmm. of stuff, yeah. Okay, and regarding uh, the renting, like if you if if one is interested to buy and rent, um, is it that you need to pay if you don't stay in the in the house for two years that you have to pay tax and the tax is is a bit higher? Uh, if you don't live in the how in the home for two consecutive years and you sell the home, then you pay tax uh, on the profit. Okay. So if you buy it for a hundred thousand and you sell for a hundred and five thousand, and you have not lived at least two years consecutively, then you have to pay tax on the five thousand. Okay. But if if you if there's no profit, there's no tax. What about on renting? If you buy it and then you rent it out, whether there is a tax when selling? Yeah, I mean uh, when renting when renting, do you also pay tax for the? Yeah, of course. Income? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah, you pay tax on on rental income. That's capital income. Yeah. Okay. okay. You pay. You can deduct uh, the maintenance charge, for example. You can deduct interest for the loan, and and mm -hmm. some other costs. Uh, but yeah, but you will pay um, capital income tax, of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and regarding the, the the location, where is it like more uh, beneficial to rent a house? Is it in the in the capital or like maybe outsider, but in, in the big cities like Tampere or Yuonsu or mm. something like Oulu you also mentioned? Difficult to say. Uh, I would say uh, if you want to live um, downtown Helsinki, for example, then it, it makes probably more sense to uh, rent because it's it would cost so much money. Uh, and and the rent in comparison to the purchase price is is relatively low. Uh, there would make sense to rent, but then if you want to live further outside, then it can make sen more sense to to buy instead. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. But let's go through the other questions because there's new ones coming okay. in. Uh, people have been waiting. Yeah. Um, ASP. Yeah, with an ASP, you have a down payment of ten percent, but uh, there's some other benefits. So it's not 5% as, as a normal first home buyer. That's true. Uh, I think the next question is, how is the potential of appreciation estimated for a property? Okay. Yes. Uh, that depends on many things. Uh, first of all, the whole market situation um, plays a big role. Yeah. Uh, and then, and then it goes, of course, into micro locations, and then it goes into what kind of property is that, what kind of heating does it have. Um, it's a very general question, difficult, difficult to answer. Uh, the potential of appreciation estimated, I would say, I mean, the only thing you cannot change uh, in a home is the location. Everything else you can change, basically. So. Um, in the end, it it will boil down uh, to the to the location most likely. So, is it a good location? Also, in the future, um, will there be a new tram line going there? A new metro line? Uh, these are, of course, uh, elements that that bring a lot of appreciation. So, in Espo, the the Lancy metro, for example, or um, you have a tram line also now, most likely in Vanta coming and. And these things, so that's that's stuff that um, will more or less guarantee. Or in Dampere, you have the new tram, uh, almost guarantee appreciation. Okay. Uh, so the following question is: What does the high maintenance charge mean in practice? Is it that the property is not well meant, is not well managed cost wise or renovation wise, or are there other factors that affect it? Uh, it has not so much to do necessarily with renovations. It's just that it has uh, maybe the an old-fashioned way of heating, like electric heating or oil heating, that it has a rented plot, that's extra cost, that um, maybe there's shareholders who don't pay 
charges and then um, the co cooperative doesn't have the means to pay the running costs so they have to increase uh, temporarily uh, charges um, it can have it's often a combination of of different different things but that is that is why i check whether it's what is the heating what is the plot situation and um these kind of things so um it's it can be because it's badly managed yeah it can be that there is fraud it can be it can be a lot of different things and that is why so with fraud i mean that that maybe there's people in the board who misuse money i mean that's not often the case but of course everything can be the reason and and often it's it's a combination of different things but you have to understand the documentation in order to to find that out that is something that i that I help with okay so the following question is kindly go over the last point in the checklist on finance on financing charge cover with interest or loan at amortization yeah yeah i went through that very quickly only so that's only if you buy a home that is uh, in a very newly constructed um, co cooperative. So if you see an ad with a home built in 2023, um, then you will have a, typically you will have a very high cooperative loan in that one. And uh, that then means that you have to pay a financing charge to pay the cooperative loan off. But uh, newly constructed homes usually have a, a three to four, four or five year period where they do not yet amortize the cooperative loan. So they start amortization only in three years time. And if you buy the flat or the home today, then the financing charge of this cooperative is only to cover interest. It's not to pay back the loan. And once the cooperative has to pay back the loan as well, not only pay interest, but also to amortize the loan, then the financing charge will pop up. And that is uh, a big change then. It will make paying back, uh, like paying the financing charge make, make difficult if you don't know that this is going to happen. Okay. I hope. Yeah. As the following question is, what are, what are some of the expensive or rather some re renovations to be careful of? Is it better to get is it better to get one home loan that should cover both the housing price and the housing cooperative cost or to pay it separately? Those yeah. are two questions. Yeah, I can see it also. So the first question, uh, the most expensive and bothersome renovations, uh, that's for sure the, the pipe renovation. Uh, there's difficult di different ways to do that. I recommend to go on my website and leave, uh, I have a renovation calculator. Where you can simulate the costs of different calcul of different um, uh, buildings of different uh, construction years, and you can enter there your surface and and when the building was constructed and so forth. So then it calculates that. Uh, you, I think you get an idea from from that quite well. Um, but then when you the question the second question on whether you should pay off the housing cooperative loan. Um, that's what banks usually uh, actually insist of, on. So they say, uh, if you take a loan from us, we want you to pay back the cooperative loan and we give you more loan for that. So that usually banks insist on, on doing that. And then that then means that you do not have to pay the, the um, financing charge at all. Oh, okay. Um, as a Finnish citizen or foreigner, is it possible to get a home loan for an apartment in the EU? Uh, the problem with that, it has nothing to do with the citizenship, but the problem with that is um, that the bank needs a security for the loan, a collateral. And if the home loan is in another country, it's very difficult for the bank to, to um, monetize this security if you don't pay it back. So if you have a Let's say it's a huge home in, in Spain and you could easily cover the whole loan amount with the home, but it, it will be difficult for a Finnish bank to to, monet, to get go to Spain and monetize this, this, this uh, property there. So they will say you can get a loan with, with securities from, from Finland because we know we know exactly what their value is and it's, it will be easier for us to to liquidize the, 
the property. So the answer is it's it's not possible. Okay, great. I think that's all we have for the questions. Unless any other person has any question. I think M has an, made a comment. <laughs> Uh, interesting that you designate five euro per square meter as average in capital region and seven is high, at least looking around my anecdotal experience that on interesting probably it seemed closer. So yeah, that's why they are uh, cheaper. So if the maintenance charge is, is high, then of course the home price has to be cheaper because you will have higher running costs. Um, one is asking, how can you navigate the age limit? Can you clarify that? You can buy a home if you're 18 or older, but if you're younger, uh, then you need someone. Hello. Who can act on behalf of you? You can specify on the age limit. Like some banks, they tell you if you're, like, let's say, over 40, like you stand a risk of not like being able to pay when you are in anarchy. So they tell you to raise up. A certain amount of money, they like they would not give you because of the age. Amount. Yes, I've not heard that so far. Um, it's maybe if you if you're let's say fifty and you want a loan a loan and then a loan period of thirty years, then of course the bank will say, hey you will not be working for 30 years. So your, your income will not be as high it is, as it is now uh, for the whole loan period. So then they might say this will not work. That's the only thing that comes to my mind now. So of course there should be enough time to, um, so the loan period should, should be in relation to the you know, working years that you still have. Hello. Can you can I ask a question? Yeah. Yes, we can hear you. Um, I am from Pakistan and uh, a non-EU country. Um, basically, I see a, 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 part, a house in El Maki area. Na? So I want to know how a non-EU country citizen purchases property in Finland, or is it uh, possible to get resident? Uh, uh, migrate to the basis of uh, purchase of property? Uh, yeah, good question. I haven't uh, commented on that at all. So if you buy a whole, um, if you buy a home that is in a cooperative, like in a bigger housing, housing cooperative, then okay. it doesn't matter, then it doesn't matter um, whether you are a EU, EU citizen or whether you have residence permit or, or anything like that. But if you buy a detached house, um, then it plays a role because if you are from outside of the EU, then you need a permit from the uh, Finnish the military, defense uh, ministry. Uh, and this is because there has been um, a lot of attempts actually from, from people close to, to um, you know, our big neighbor country, um, who have tried to buy big land, parts of land close to um, military areas in Finland or to critical infrastructure ne next to nuclear power plants and so forth. So the Minister so of Defense wants, wants to be to have a veto right to this. So, but that affects only um, detached houses. So okay. you you might need a permit if you want to buy a detached house. You will get it. You will get the permit uh, if. I mean, if you have no ties to to the Kremlin. Okay, and um, uh, it's uh, I can uh, see your contact detail on this. Actually, I go to the mosque for prayer, so I didn't hear the whole session. So I uh, I can uh, contact with you personally. Yeah. I'll... Yes. Okay. okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I think the final question is, is there the amortization details of the housing cooperative also stated in that documentation? Or this is a question we need to ask. 
Uh, it's very good question. It's usually uh, annuity. So the, the cooperative usually takes annuity loans. So that means that, um, yeah, I'm not going to explain what that is, but that's the, the that's the standard. And it's written in the documentation, yeah, whether it is an annuity loan or, um, sorry, I, I, I said something wrong. It's not an annuity, actually. It's uh, equal uh, amortization plan that the cooperatives always take. Sorry, that was a mistake. It's almost always equal amortization uh, and it's written in the documentation. Yeah, you can see that there. And if it's not written, you can ask the property manager. All right. I think that's all for the, oh wait. When is the real estate? <laughs> There's no real estate. Yeah, it's, it's, it's too much. Yeah, no, not today. <laughs> Maybe another yeah. time. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you all for joining. I hope the session was uh very good for you and to, to give you a stepping a stepping stone on where to start when you want to buy a home in Finland. Please follow him on all his social media handles and reach out to him personally if you need any help in regarding buying a home in Finland. And please, 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 we beg you to fill in the feedback form. We truly appreciate to hear your feedback. Thank you, Michael. This was a lovely Thank you, Yvonne. And hope to hear from you soon. Yeah. Have a all lovely right. weekend and a lovely evening, guys. Enjoy yourselves. Bye. Yeah. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks. Thank you. Bye.